Good morning everyone, welcome back to today's video. Today we are doing a double upload, a special day, because Spigot 1.17 has been released. And just like every single release for the past years, I think two, three years now, we're going to do a video on how to get the Spigot Jar properly using build tools. If you didn't know, you're really not supposed to download Spigot Jars online. There's kind of exceptions for paper and forks, um, but the original Spigot Jars should not be downloaded from third-party sites. They even go into that a little bit on um, this thread and you can read through it if you want um, and I'll do a video at some point on the history of why that's a thing but regardless let's go into a few things about 1.17 the main thing about 1.17 is the Java version now requires Java 16 kind of confusing with all the different numbers but we're gonna need Java 16 to go ahead and run our servers now previously the requirement was Java 8 everything was built off Java 8 but now everything's built off Java 16 this also means a lot of plugins are gonna break if they have like game changing elements in them like reflection or NMS the reason for this is because when when we've moved up to 1.17 it's going to change all those things with um java 16 so you may have to wait for some of your plugins to update things like that so just keep that in mind in terms of caves and cliffs update obviously it is 1.17 but some of the features from 1.18 are in a experimental data pack on the server you can still enable this but there's no way to revert it so i don't recommend enabling it for your world um, if you really don't want bugs and stuff like that um, it goes over how to upgrade if you have a 1.16 server. Pretty much how to do that is you use the dash dash force upgrade server argument and the same when you upgrade to 1.17 and it will go ahead and change any little bits of your world to work on 1.17. We're not going to be doing this because we don't have a server to upgrade. We're going to be installing for the first time. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. What you're going to want to do is you want to go down to the downloading section of this link. And you're just going to go ahead and see you download the latest build tools from this link. Go ahead and click that and it will go ahead and download a file. Go ahead and keep that on your uh, downloads tab. There's two other things we're going to need for this. We're going to need Git. So you can go ahead and download Git for Windows directly from this page. They also have a Mac and Linux version, I believe. Well, you don't really need it on Linux, but you do need it for Windows or Mac. So go ahead and download the one designed for your um, operating system and you're also going to need to download Java 16 same thing just download the one for your operating system um, it will make you log into the site unfortunately but that's Oracle for you um, so just go ahead and download the latest one because this will allow your server to actually function using the new 1. Uh, Java 16 requirement all right so we're gonna go ahead and move this to the side here so you can still see the command line arguments we're gonna be running but we're gonna create a new folder and on the, our desktop I'm just gonna name this 1.17 build tools or just name it whatever you want um, just make sure you have some type of folder where you're gonna run build tools in and you're gonna drag the build tools jar into here and you're gonna rename it and you're gonna make sure it is just build tools dot jar you don't want any extra spaces or anything like that because that's gonna affect our command line argument um, just to make sure if you have that dot jar and what I recommend doing is I recommend going to view and make sure file name extensions are on in your file explorer. It makes things a little bit easier so you can actually see their extensions rather than just um, under the type icon. Alright, so when you're in here, you're going to right click and you're going to see a new option that says get back here. Go in and click that and that will open up a command prompt. And this is where we're actually going to run um, our downloading 1.17 command. So all you have to do is copy it from the download page on um, the spigot and then right click and paste it in and press enter. And then all of a sudden it will start the clone of spigot from their repository and it will compile it together into a spigot jar this could take some time it could take about five ten minutes depending on your um, download speeds and all of that so just make sure to keep that in mind and you can actually see it actually start in the folder downloading everything it's going to need because craft buckets the base then they go into bucket and then they go into spigot and then they um finally have your new spigot jar so it could take a minute i will let this speed up and i'll be back momentarily
All right, so you can see Build Tools has completed now, and you can see in our folder we have our Spigot 1.17 jar. We are now ready to go and get our server started. Now, if you are on a host or something like that, you would take the Spigot 1.17 jar, put that on your host, and you go ahead and start your server that way. If you're on localhost, you're going to have to create something called a start.bat file or something that actually runs this jar file. We're going to go ahead and get that started now. So we can close out of our git window here and we can also close out of our main uh, like spigot window here and we're going to go ahead and create another folder on our desktop and in this case I'm just going to name it 1.17 to keep it easy for us. In this 1.17 folder what you're going to do is you're going to drag the spigot.1.17 jar into the folder just like that. I would recommend not deleting your build tools folder. The reason for this is on new releases like this there's going to be lots of updates to the spigot jar. I recommend doing the build tools process once a week or so and then dragging that updated jar to replace your current server jar. So now that we are in our folder here I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to new and make a new text document. Now if you remember earlier when we enabled file extensions from this uh, down arrow here we're going to go ahead and copy and including the file extension, and I'm just going to name it start.bat. And you're going to get a warning saying, hey, you're going to make this unusable. Go ahead and click yes. And you can see it has turned into like a little icon. And if I try to run it, it will say this app can't run on your PC because there's nothing in it. Um, so you can go ahead and right click and edit this with Notepad if you want to use Notepad, or you can right click and edit it with Notepad++, which is what I recommend doing just based on um, how it looks, and it's a little bit easier to do things. Um, so I am going to go ahead and show you a little bit, and I'm going to copy a little bit of um, a start.bat text in here. And this will be down in the uh, description as well. This is the one I use for 1.16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change it to spigot 1.17.jar. Pretty much with this, you just need to make sure your, wherever your spigot jar is here, it goes ahead and um, gets it from right here. This is your RAM. So I'm going to give it actually another... I'm going to give it a gigabyte extra of RAM there just so it can use that. Um, and then you just have the Spigot 1.17, no GUI option. So you don't have two GUIs popping up instead of one. Um, so pretty much what this does, make sure you don't accidentally click S on your keyboard. What this actually does is it will go ahead and start your server. This is the title of whatever your command prompt is. You don't really need to worry about this unless you have a reason to. And then it will go ahead and every time it restarts, rather than just closing directly, it will ask you if you want to restart. The reason I include this code is because it's actually really helpful for everything you're doing. Like if you are doing development on 1.17 or something and you want to restart the server, rather than re-clicking your start.bat, it will just ask you in console if you want to restart. You press yes or you press y to restart. Great. If not, you press anything else and it will close. So pretty easy there. So now that we have created that, if we double click it now, it's going to go ahead and say loading libraries. And you can see it will load the logs folder and all of the other folders we need, including the Alula dot um text file i'm just gonna go ahead and change this to true make sure to actually read that by the way i've read it multiple times so just keep that in mind and here's an example of the restart do you want to restart i want to restart so i'm going to just type y so rather than double clicking that start.bat again it's just going to go ahead and reload once again here and now it's going to go ahead and create your worlds allow access to java just so it um can actually use it correctly and windows won't block anything because that could be a hassle but you can see all of our folders are now generated you got your user your cache, you got your whitelist, the bucket.yml, commands.yml, spigot.yml, server.properties is going to be the biggest one for you. You got the worlds folder and your plugins folder. So if you decide to do plugins of any sort, you can just drag those into the plugins folder. We are now good to go. It has loaded in 19 seconds. We can join. Let's go ahead and check it out on 1.17. All right, so I have Minecraft 1.17 up, and if I go to the multiplayer screen, just make sure you read it and click through all of that, and it's going to ask you once again to allow access to the new Java version. Just allow it, obviously. And what you're going to do is, to make it easy on yourself, you're going to add a server to your server list, and all you have to do under server address is type localhost. This will allow you to connect to whatever server is running on your computer at that point. Obviously, if you're using a host, you would put in the IP they give you, but if you put in localhost, you can see our 1.17 server is opened here. Go ahead and double click on this. It's going to join, and as long as you join and connect correctly, you're in your Minecraft 1.17 server. So, welcome 
welcome to Minecraft 1.17. To see the version, just run slash version. If it says you are like a number of versions behind, go ahead and just run build tools again and um, it will create you the latest jar from there. And obviously in your console, you can see I have joined the game. There's my username. I'm going to opt myself. So I have all server commands just like that. And I'm now a server operator. So that's how you install a Minecraft 1.17 server. I will leave a link to our um, port forwarding guide for Minecraft just so you can get an idea on how to allow other people on your server as well. All links are down in the description, timestamps as well. Um, I'm sorry if this video was, seemed a little rushed. I wanted to get it out on the same, well, technically the day after Spigot 1.17 released. So make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you in the next video. Let me know what resources and plugins you want me to review down in the description or down in the comments as well. And 5M People, 5M Video releases tomorrow. So have a great day. Goodbye, everyone.